Hey guys and welcome back to Churn Farms. It's uh, day 19 of late autumn and uh, we have finally gotten over here to harvesting our corn. Um, we uh, finished our soybean field yesterday and uh, went ahead and uh, took the grain header and trailer down to the shop and sold those. Uh, we won't need them for another um, year, or basically another full three seasons. So we went ahead and then uh, did not quite have enough money to buy the uh, grain or the uh, corn header. So we just leased the corn header. So we're kind of kind of incentivized to get this uh, get this field done as fast as possible, uh, simply because time is money with a lease, and uh, we do not want to uh, rack up any more lease costs than we have to. Uh, once we get this field harvested. Uh, we will be taking our harvester and header uh, back to the shop. We will return the header to uh, end the lease on that, and we will be selling the harvester back. So we are very much incentivized to get this field done. Uh, that's one reason why we went ahead and got the mega, mega corn header, uh, so that we can try to get as much of this done as fast as possible. And you all may be noticing something a little different about the field here. And that is that uh, we have a chopped straw texture for corn. This is the first map that I've seen that has chopped straw, uh, specific chopped straw texture for corn. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm really liking it. I was I was really shocked and surprised when I turned the harvester on and uh, and started to go with this field. I was like, oh, what's that? And uh, once once it gets daylight, you'll see it looks really good in the daylight. It looks just like uh, corn would in the field after it's been uh, run through the harvester. We've got our hired worker uh, running running the tractor, carting our grain, so we can focus on harvesting this field. In fact, that might be him coming now. Right there are those lights. So we still have our $150,000 loan that we took out uh, for the purpose of buying our pigs. Uh, we did go ahead and get the pigs. As you can see in the upper left corner with Glance, we have 100 pigs, 102 sheep, and 107 cows. Um, still not sure what the uh, why I'm getting a notice about 76,700 um, and 20 liters of manure, unless that thing has a uh, has a capacity. I thought uh, I thought manure pits were kind of uh, um, not an endless capacity, but I thought they had a significant capacity above uh, above just 76,000. It's not in the red yet, so that's good. Um, but basically, what that seems to be telling me is we may want to uh, to put some manure down on a field and uh, see if we can't maybe use use that up. Uh, because I was going to uh, just hoard it and uh, use it next year. But if we're already in a warning indication state for that, then uh, we can't really hoard it. We'll just uh, we'll just hoard the slurry between the two uh, between the pigs and the uh, cows. But uh, we went ahead and also purchased a small Massey Ferguson tractor for the pig area. And that included a uh, front end arms and a bale fork uh, so that we can uh, fork our straw for the pigs and fork our hay for the sheep. So we'll use that tractor between the two uh, animals down there. I went ahead and picked up a small Brantner trailer, although I thought the trailer had more capacity than um, I thought it only had a 5,000 liter capacity, but it turns out it's got a little greater capacity than that which is fine um, it's still you know a nice little trailer that we will use at that silo for the purpose of feeding our pigs 
send a little corn here. I guess he's decided to go ahead and uh, go on back to the uh, silo and close up our. Pipe. So he's going to make his way back to the pig farm, I think, and uh, unload that corn there. We are including our second headland, so we are going to... Uh, I guess we might as well just keep focusing on, on making our our rounds of the field uh, just to keep the pipe out so that the uh, course play driver doesn't end up uh, driving through the crop. So now that we are in day 19 of autumn, we also now have a little bit of a sneak peek into uh, what winter is going to bring us at least early winter. Take a look at that. All right, headlights back on. So as you can see, we can now peep into uh, second day of winter. We have uh, fairly decent temperatures the first day, cloudy weather. Uh, the second day, we're getting down there below a 31. Uh, it's it's dangerously close to having frozen ground that early into winter. I was. I was kind of hoping, kind of hoping that we would uh, wouldn't see frozen ground until a little further into winter, uh, because once the ground freezes, all work stops in the field. We can't uh, do anything. Uh, we can't even spread manure or fertilizer. So that's kind of what I was I was banking on is being able to uh, possibly do some manure spreading work uh, into early winter. But uh, we'll just have to see how it all plays out. Uh, if we uh, if we finish this field today, which I'm really hoping we can, then that will basically give us um, four. Well, it will give us five good days to work on putting our oilseed radish down on the fields that we want to uh, oilseed radish. So I'm thinking about prioritizing the fields that have uh, hills to them which would be um, field 31 uh, we already put oil seed radish down on field 14 and field 28 uh, both of those fields have pretty steep uh, hilly terrain and I'd like to put the oil seed radish down so that it's there over winter to help aid with uh, with erosion so we should have plenty. Whoa, 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 here, buddy. Whoa, here. All righty. Uh, I guess we'll just sit here and wait. While oh, we're waiting, I guess let's take a little closer look at this chopped straw texture. That is pretty darn cool looking. All right, so I'll just uh, cut here and uh, wait for uh, wait for this tractor to decide that it wants to come on up here and uh, and pull up our corn. All right, looks like she's pulling up here now. Be able to unload ourselves here. And, uh, might as well just go ahead and get back to the game of harvesting. Now that we've got uh, sun's up, take a look at the nice scenery, nice late autumn fall colors on the trees, uh, nice color of the uh, corn ready to harvest, and of course the uh, chopped straw here all makes a wonderful, wonderful scene. Let's go ahead and uh, send him on. I guess send her on. 
And then that way she has a chance to maybe get back here uh, before we go and fill up again. So one thing I did was since the field is so long, um, I had I had course play set to uh, auto auto detect the harvester, and instead I just manually selected to uh, basically use this harvester or follow this harvester. So uh, maybe that will help um, getting her to. Uh, to come unload us right away. So instead of listening to me talk constantly, I'm going to uh, uh, hush up and uh, we'll put this to a little bit of a music. Alright, so I think that is a little bit too far for our, uh, uh, for our driver, to our, for our hired help to be, uh, to be carting our grain back directly from the field, but, uh, but at any rate, that's what we'll do for the rest of this field. I'm going to, uh, to cut here, and, uh, we'll come back, uh, as we're finishing up this field, so then you can, uh, participate in the, uh, in the great sell-off of our harvester and the return of our header and see what kind of money we get back. So guys, we are just about done our corn harvest and it's a good darn thing because it is about to uh, about to rain I think. Uh, we got uh, the rain coming in, we got the sun setting. Let's go ahead and just hide the HUD there for a moment. Let's take a look at our uh, our darkening skies. We've got the uh, got the uh, lighthouse beams over there, rotating, and we got this wonderful sunset, wonderful colored skies, contrasted with the trees. Our harvester here running. We are just about done our harvest season, if you will, for the uh, for the year. 
I have not quite yet. I have not looked and seen how much uh, corn we brought in at this point. So I am a little bit uh, excited to see if we brought in enough corn to satisfy our pigs' needs. While we are uh, on our return trip here, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my document and uh, see what kind of uh, needs our pigs are going to have and uh, just validate once we're done here that we, uh, we will have enough. So as I said, the plan is to, uh, once we finish this harvest, uh, to go ahead and take this harvester and head back to the store and uh, sell it back, see what we get for it. And then as you can see from glance, it looks like we need to uh, take some water down to our sheep, we need to uh, feed and water our cows also. We're going to try to get that done today. All right. Turn up here and grab this a little bit. Cab. It's a lot quieter in cab. There we are. Grab this a little bit here. We'll look at that spreadsheet. All right, here comes our uh, helper. Me, like I said, let me go check that spreadsheet and see what we're going to get here. According to our spreadsheet, we are going to um, keep 150 pigs. Uh, we are going to need 162,000 liters of corn. So let's see, we've got 11,600 there. Let's see how much corn we got. Uh, I honestly don't know how much corn I haven't looked. So we've got 144,000. We need an additional 20,000 liters. Uh, no, we need an additional 18,000 liters. Uh, we only had 11,000 there, so we're not going to have enough corn to uh, to carry us through till next year. So we're going to have to uh, buy some corn in, maybe. Again, these numbers are for 150 pigs. We only have 101 pigs at the moment. We've had a uh, pig birth. All right, so we're going to go ahead and send him on home. Go ahead and fold up our harvester here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and drive him on back to the shop. So I was looking at our spreadsheet numbers, and it looks like if we if we figure that we have 125 sheep over the course of the year, we only need 135,000 liters of corn, and we've got 155,000 liters. So we should probably be okay, um, given the fact that we've got 101 now. And as soon as we get out of autumn, our she our pigs are going to stop reproducing. So we won't have to worry about our pigs reproducing during winter. And uh, then we'll basically feed them all winter. And then our pigs will start to reproduce again in springtime. And uh, that's when we're going to get a fairly good number of sheep or uh, pigs, I suspect. And uh, then once summer hits, they'll stop reproducing again. So that's pretty good. I think uh, I think we'll be okay with this. Uh, we'll just have to see. We'll probably be cutting it close, but I think we're going to be okay as far as our corn goes. It's just oh, shut her down. Make sure we got all our stuff out of here. Yep, looks like we got a clean cab. Shut her down. Up on out. 
place. She sure got dirty. I noticed the fuel was getting pretty low. It was pretty good that we didn't have to put any more fuel in it. All right, so $365,981 is what we're going to get for that. Let's see what this thing cost us. $398,000. So I just want to do a little bit of math and just see if leasing should have been, uh, would have been good for us. So I'm going to pull up my calculator off screen. 390, oops, 398,000. Okay, and we're going to get 365,000 back. So $32,000 is basically what um, we're losing on this deal. So let's look and see if we leased this thing. Oh, oh, well, look at it there. Just to, just to lease it and not use it is $35,000. So we're going to lose $32,000. So this was definitely well worth buying it and then selling it. Boom. Got money. We're going to return our header. Remember, we had to lease our header. So we are now, we're out of the poor house. Uh, we now have $400,000. So we went ahead and uh, on our way up here, we called over and asked uh, asked our help if we could, uh, if they could bring the truck by. They've went ahead and gone on home for the day. But we're going to uh, going to go ahead and run down to the sheep actually, and go ahead and get water in them, get water for them. I'll show you the uh, equipment we got real quick for the pigs and the sheep, but we're not actually going to look at it. We're not going to feed them or anything. And uh, then we're going to run back and uh, go ahead and take care of our cows tonight. Call it a call it a night. About to rain at any moment, really. Clouds, clouds look like they're getting ready to roll in. As far as the sky goes. On up in here. So I wanted to do that math and um, show you the uh, the costs there associated with the leasing and buying and selling of the harvester. I had a question today um, asked in the video that dealt with the wheat harvest why I would um, sell the harvester when I know I'm just going to need to buy it back, meaning buy it next year. And uh, that was the exact reason, is is the uh, the amount of money that is tied up in that harvester, and you're not using the harvester, not uh, sheep. Uh, sheep, you got up on the roof. Now you're not uh, using the harvester every single day uh, during winter, during spring, and during summer. So you might as well. Uh, might as well get rid of it, and uh, that way you're not spending money on it. So look, let's take a look at the uh, daily cost. The daily cost on this thing is $1,400 a day. Now, we're not actually spending $1,400 a day. If you look at our, let's save this here. If you look at our vehicle running costs, it's only $563. That was yesterday's day before was 617 the day before was 545 day before was 573 so seasons obviously does an adjustment uh, with respect to vehicle daily maintenance but uh, if we weren't running seasons we would be spending fourteen hundred dollars a day just for the privilege of owning that harvester that's a pretty good chunk of change and uh, and even $500 or $600 a day with the amount of equipment that we have and the fact that you've got 96 game days per year, okay? So if it's just $500 a day, let's just use that calculator again. 
five hundred dollars a day times ninety six game days is forty eight thousand dollar so if you have the equipment that I've got on the map and you just let it sit around for 96 game days, you don't really use it, you're going to spend $48,000 just for the privilege of owning it. Well, if you don't need it, then get rid of it. In fact, we're going to uh, we're going to be selling most, if not all, of our bailing equipment uh, and the two side millers. Um probably the next game day because we're not going to need it we're done we're done the grass work here you don't need the square baler get rid of it you don't need the rake let's get rid of it you don't need the tether let's get rid of it you don't need the bale stacker get rid of that and we're going to get rid of the side mowers and we're only going to keep the uh, front mowers and let's go ahead and fill and the only reason we're going to keep the front mowers is because until winter, uh, we're going to need them to uh, mow grass for our for our cows. Uh, once winter hits, uh, we could sell them also, so that we don't have that daily maintenance hit. We're not going to go and blow that money on on things. Uh, we will buy them back. The gist is that we want to try to save our money as best as possible. And you could argue that uh, buying it and selling it back, or selling it and then buying it back, is actually more costly. And it may be. It may be that the mowers we probably just should keep. At least the front mower. Um, or I might pick up the uh, coon mowers next time instead of the John Deere's. I know the coon mowers are cheaper. So that's just the gist, and that's my way of thinking, is that we sell this stuff when we don't need it um, simply for the fact of trying to reduce our, our running costs per day as much as possible. Well, that drains. I'm going to go ahead and come over here. Might as well pick up the mower. And run over here and pick up the forage wagon. Might as well... Uh, Might as well mow up what we need to mow for our cows. Them taken care of. So I tell you, the, the idea of mowing up this cow pasture, uh, since the cows clearly aren't going to eat the grass themselves, is a uh, pretty good worked out pretty good for us. Oh, we left the fence open. I can get through here. So I've been through here before. There we go. Come on, Betsy, get out of the way. All right. Drop this, turn her on, drop that on, and let me see again how much we're going to need. I think I know how much we're going to need. We have 107 cows. We're going to need, in autumn, we're going to need 5,600 liters of grass. Now we have 14%. Of that, I'm not going to need all 5,600 liters. Probably going to need just over 5,000 liters. We're going to mow up about 5,000 liters of grass, and um, feed that to our cows. Then we're going to 
gonna mix up some power food and feed that to our cows. And that will call us that will call it a day for us. We're we'll head home. Get plenty of rest for tomorrow. Tomorrow who knows what tomorrow's gonna bring. Because we already have uh, finished our harvest. E. So I do know we're gonna take some equipment back to the shop. We're gonna sell that. Our pigs are gonna need to be cared for. There we go. Betsy, you didn't need to walk through the forage wagon. Oh, here comes the rain. Put off long enough for us to get everything done. Good estimation. We're going to go out this other gate because I like having both of these uh, the mixer wagon and the forage wagon. Um, I like having them both positioned. So that I can just uh, come through this way, pick them up. Oh, I'm gonna drop this off the gra leftover grass off over here at the uh, <clears throat> fermentation silo. See, we still have some uh, chaff here. look at our chaff levels still have 243,000 liters of chaff to uh, to convert to silage up our our food mixer I don't know how much we've got in here fair bit it might be enough I don't know it's not enough it's going to be just barely I think not enough And watch those bars go up. Get them some straw too. Yeah, our pigs are gonna be need to be cared for tomorrow. Oh, not quite enough, so we're gonna go ahead and mix up another batch. I'm gonna go ahead and top off our cows. And we're gonna feed our pigs and our sheep tomorrow. That way they're on the same cycle. We'll know that uh Basically, the day after we care for our cows, let's shut this gate. The day after we care for our cows, we're going to need to care for our pigs and sheep. Come on. Oh, 
And we want 10,000 liters of silage for this particular mixer wagon. Uh, that's because this mixer wagon holds 22,000 liters of product. So the right ratio that I'm going to use is 10,000 liters of silage, 4,000 liters of straw, so one bale of straw, and 8,000 liters of hay, or two bales of hay. Let's keep an eye on that fill level. And stop. All right. It's close. Good. And park this here. Get our telehandler. See if we can do all this in cab. Oh, whoa. That was a little bit of a shock. Yeah, that was there. We need. We're going to get two bales of straw. The reason we're going to get two bales of straw is because our cows need straw bedding. We're going to go ahead and get two bales of straw here. One bale for bedding. Oh, they went ahead and took both bales for bedding. Okay, well. It's okay, we'll just get another bale. I'm not near good at doing this uh, first person as uh, Mark DuPont, that's for sure, but give it a go. There we go. He has the added benefit of track IR. Being able to really move the uh, camera around. Two bales of hay. It's far easier coming at it from the side. Oh, not cool. Down. Go. Take our telehandler back. Looks like it's already midnight. You need to pay that loan off. That tomorrow morning. To run back to the shop and uh, do that because there's a, a bank ATM there. So that will lower our balance by 150000 because we have a $150,000 loan. We're going to pay off. With that, guys, I want to thank you all for watching. 
you like this video, please consider clicking the like button. If you don't like this video, then that's fine. Click the don't like button all you want. It's fine with me. Uh, if you uh, want to subscribe, please consider clicking the subscribe button. Uh, that way you'll get notifications of upcoming released content. Uh, we do map videos every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, hopefully. We do Let's Play videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. are also planning on continuing to do streams, live streams, every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday we will be streaming the Three Dudes Gaming Network app, which is currently the West Coast. And on Wednesday and Friday, we're going to try to be streaming on the Upper Mississippi River Valley. Uh, we are playing 24-day seasons on Upper Mississippi River, River Valley as well. So, with that, guys, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell, and happy farming.